So now in this video, I'm going to modify the uh, last circuit that we did. So we had the 741 op amp. This particular one is the UA741, but uh, any 741 op amp should work just fine. And we wired it in a stable mode, so we flashed a couple LEDs back and forth continuously. And this video, we're going to set the voltage that the timing capacitor charges and discharges to and so we will uh, look at that later on but uh, for now we have 18 volts at the rail there and then this 741 op amp it's splitting the rail so we have the halfway point 9 volts and uh, it puts 9 out of that 18 there but if we consider that the 0 volt reference point we'll have 9 volts positive to the red rail and then 9 volts negative to the negative rail in relationship to ground. So now zooming in. First let's do the capacitor and so to get oscillations where you want the timing circuit to the inverting input right there. Pin number two, second pin down and we're gonna put the negative side of the capacitor. It is a 10 microfarad capacitor and uh, so micro uses the little mu symbol it kind of looks like a u but it's the greek letter mu and then farad so 10 millionths of a farad it takes 1 million microfarads to equal 1 farad and we'll put that at the uh, inverting input right there and there we go so now for timing we're going to use we're going to keep the timing slow so a 330,000 ohm resistor. So the value of the capacitor and the resistance will determine how long it takes to charge. So larger values take longer, smaller values go faster, and uh, you find a balance between the two va values of the components based on what you have and the timing that you need. So now for the timing we're going to be setting the voltage to the inverting or non-inverting input right there we're gonna clamp so these are 5.1 volt Zener diodes and their voltage changes slightly with with uh, how much current is going through them but to begin with to clamp them we set them in opposite directions because current is going to be alternating. So to set that 5.1 volts, that is well it is reversed bias. So first we're going to put one here and uh, as we said before they're rated for 5.1 volts and there we go. So when the output is positive current will go through a resistor. We'll be adding that later. Then it's going to go through this LED. But when it comes to this LED it's reverse bias so it'll give 5.1 volts of uh, voltage blockage. So block about 5.1 volts and it will hold by itself 5.1 volts at that point. So now we're going to insert the other Zener diode. So they're in series. And so now when the output is high current's going to go through the resistor then this one's going to block about 0.7 volts and that one's going to block 5.1 volts approximately it varies a little bit with current but uh, so that will give us a total of about 5.8 volts that is being blocked so now the reason why we have this wire like this sometimes the output's low it comes there and then Zener diodes whether they're forward bias they still block about 0.7 volts so when the output is low there then our ground will be a higher voltage and so this one's gonna block about 0.7 volts and then that one's gonna block about 5.1 volts because that one's forward bias that one's reverse bias and so basically since uh, they block a different voltage forward bias versus reverse bias their voltage rating is reverse bias then we have two of them back to back and so no matter which way the current's going they're going to block the same amount of voltage and to begin with we're going to use a one kilo ohm resistor remember they are at the non-inverting pin in series and we're going to connect that there that is going to set the current 
So as I said, their voltage varies slightly, or a bit, with uh, how much current's going through them. So we'll see how we can manipulate that later. So now moving on to our load, and by the way, as I said before, the uh, output of this 741 op amp is our ground, our zero volt reference point. You can see we have a jumper there, and then a jumper there that uh, extends the range of our ground to all of these pins here, or the pins at the output. So for a load, it, it's nice with these oscillating circuits to have LEDs that light up. So you get an idea what's going on. The red LED I want to light up when the output's more positive and the ground is more negative in relationship to the LED. So longly the anode is going to go to this blank row. Shortly the cathode is going to go to our virtual ground. We've got a green LED that I want to light up when the output is more negative. So I'm going to have the short lead, the cathode, heading towards the output of uh, this trim pot and then the line lead the anode to our virtual ground which is the output of that 741 op amp like that and now we're going to use a 1 kilo ohm resistor again because we'll only deal with about 9 volts or less probably about 7 volts and uh, fortunately I'm blocking the light but you can still see what's going on so we're going to the bottom of the resistors and then to the output of that trim pot. So current flows this way and that way for the load when the LEDs light up. So now, hopefully I wired everything all right. We will turn the power on. And this is a slow oscillation. They are uh, going to take a little while to go back and forth. There we go. It finally flipped. So what we're going to do, look at voltages in relationship to ground. So we're up to the output of that the trim pot to the jumper and we're gonna go to the Zener diodes and as I said before we have the 5.1 volts plus the 0.7 volts and so it's a little less than that but as I said before the voltages are not exact and they they shift a little bit based on current but there you can see we have that in the capacitor because of uh, feedback has to keep going back and forth between those voltages that we set so that was the main thing about this video getting the idea that you can set voltages within a circuit based or using Zener diodes and uh, clamping them like this you can set it really easily with uh, two Zener diodes that are in series but wired in opposite directions so now what we're going to do is I'd actually like to get closer to 5 volts and so this is a 1 kilo ohm resistor that is going to the Zener diodes and this circuit it's pretty safe to uh, yank out components and then uh, put new ones in so this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor 10 times the resistance so I kind of zoom in and uh, so you can see the wiring a little bit more so 10 kilo ohms we're gonna go to where the Zener diode and the inverting input go and I made more electrical connections than I wanted to, but uh, in any case, that pin does not want to go in there. Alright, it's bent, but oh well, it's in there good enough. So, so we have the 10 kilo ohm resistor there. So there's less current going through the Zener diodes. They're going to be blocking a little bit less voltage. So we'll go back to our virtual ground and go to the Zener diode. And there you can see now we have almost spot on 5 volts positive and uh, negative so I don't know that there's all that much use for that in this circuit and now that's uh, what the capacitor has to charge and discharge to but this is a commonly known circuit when you're studying op amps so I think it's a good time to uh, add the clamping Zener diodes and of course other Zener diodes have other voltage ratings so you can select what you need just remember if you also put one forward bias to it because you're dealing with alternating current you're gonna have to deal with this forward voltage which is pretty easy to know it's about 0.7 volts but as you can see if you reduce the current going through them then they block a little less voltage so 
any case, I thought that was a nice easy modification to this circuit that I covered in the last couple of videos and uh, it helps you see one of the ways you can use the effect of the clamping diodes. So thanks for watching, I will see you in the next video.